Aloha everyone, this is June 16th through 21st of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. But before we get into the 16th, we need to go back and finish up June 15th. So let's get into it. We continue on June 15th with Ken Boyer, who's on Leilani Avenue looking back at the lava channel. And he starts hearing rumors from some people in social media as well as county authorities. They're suggesting that the lava flow in here is moving at roughly 40 miles an hour. Now, we disagree. I, I disagree entirely. So what I end up doing is start putting points on the lava flow and keeping track of its time as it crosses one side of the roadway until it crosses the other side of the roadway with a stopwatch. With that, we're able to then determine a rough analog for speed. We know the distance that it traveled and how long it took for it to travel there, roughly. We found that it was going roughly 17.5 miles an hour. USGS came out the next day with their estimation using entirely different methods, and they found that it was moving at 17 miles an hour. So we were kind of right on the mark on that one. We're now looking at footage from June 16th. We are a little bit further down the lava channel in the braided section, and the footage here has had its playback speed uh, messed with, but you can see just how fluid this lava is. Here we are at the McKenzie Beach Park looking at a brush fire that is burning in the SO2 saturated and dead vegetation. This is down where the lava first made ocean entry over three weeks ago. And it is at the surface cool, but inside of the lava flow, it's still retaining heat. It's still very hot, still molten. And it's still able to put heat through some chimneys for lack of a better word into the vegetation, which can set it alight even weeks after surface activity has stopped. Back up in Leilani Estates at Fisher 8, a special ceremony is gathering. We conclude June 16th with a look at the thermal map produced by USGS, which shows primarily that the ocean entry is continuing to move more and more to the south. We begin June 17th out on the boat with the Kaika Marzo, looking at the ocean entry with Fisher 8 off in the background. Now, we see more of these explosions taking place right around the ocean entry, which is the most common place for them. They don't really extend that far off into the ocean consistently. There are a couple that are taking place further offshore, but the vast majority are right around this ocean entry. We also get another look at the Bay of Kapoho and the homes that remain standing in the area. There aren't many left, but of the homes that remain, not many have been lost in the previous couple of days. Here we see another brush fire burning down near Green Mountain in one of the little kipukas. This kipuka has a home left standing in it, one isolated home, and this home is going to end up surviving the entire eruption. Early in the morning on June 18th, we are back up at the Kilauea caldera. There was a seismic event early this morning that released a gas pour plume up to about 1600 feet. Now this is different from the magnitude 5.3 collapse events, which are continuing on a daily interval, but it was worthwhile to note anyways. We got a little tornado going here on Fisher 8. It's June 19th, incredible. Over the previous several days, there hasn't really been that much of a change at Fisher 8. The activity remains at a very high output with Occasional overflows of the channel walls, which are less frequent than when Fisher 8 first emerged, but are still ongoing. One of the questions, though, that we have at this point, and it came about naturally after thinking about the speed of the lava channel, is just what is its volume? And in order to know that, we need to know the depth of the lava channel. And that's where things start to get complicated. Because the traditional models that would be used would suggest with a channel that wide that it would be quite shallow. 
but it doesn't look shallow. There's, it doesn't look like it's two to three feet deep. It looks like it's much deeper around that lava channel. We are back up at the Y of Highway 132 in Pooiki Road with another brush fire. Now all of this brown that you see in this sugarcane grass is damages from previous brush fires. They're quite common in this area. And as long as they're not threatening anything, they're kind of just left to eventually die off. We begin June 20th back with Kaikamarzo on his boat looking at the ocean entry. Ocean entry is still moving to the south gradually and activity at Fisher 8 has not waned at all. The changes that are taking place at this point are mostly into the response from the authorities. There's been some shuffling of the guard and the Department of Land and Natural Resources has entered the scene. But that has made some additional complexities that I'm gonna let Malinka Lincoln explain she's reporting daily from the 2018 eruption and she's doing an amazing job but she explains it better than i can hi so what's, what's the new new updates here oh my goodness um with today um just about josiah's thing and, and the viewing area well we're definitely in fact i'm going to email dlnr right now to try to clarify what the policy in terms of what is the parameters or boundaries or um, assigned area that is considered a disaster zone, um, since that seems to keep coming up as a question about where people can and cannot be. Uh, we understand that there are certainly people who've been trespassing on private property, but there is this question of being the guest as a private property owner, uh, what that means and, and, and what that allows you to do or not to. Certainly this question of being able to touch cool lava is very interesting, given that Josiah and a group of people were told that that's illegal, so we want to clarify that. Um, we know that all of this is coming at a time that the Hawaii County Civil Defense Agency is considering establishing a public viewing access area, one that certainly lots of folks have been asking for, not just because of what it would do for the local economy in terms of giving people an opportunity to still come and see and experience for either closure or healing or just the sheer fascination of it all since Hawaii Volcanoes National Park now has been closed for nearly seven weeks. So there's some things I want to expand upon here that are important that Malika brings up. I'm going to just be speaking over footage from June 20th and June 21st for this. So first thing is about Josiah, the cooled lava, and DNLR and the drama that came about from that. So the context there is Josiah and some guys went down to Josiah's property, property that he owns, that the lava had come and taken a part of the property. The lava had since cooled. And they were out there by that recent lava flow and DNLR came up and told them that they weren't allowed to be around it. Now this didn't make much sense to them considering that in Hawaii, the way the property works is if lava comes and flows over your land, it's still your land. You now own the new lava, the new land that's on top of your old land. So it was weird to see DNLR doing this, but this wasn't the first and it's not gonna be the last time DNLR starts putting their noses into people's business that are already impacted directly by the 2018 eruption. The second thing she's talking about is the viewing area. Now this is also important because the county had promised, essentially Harry Kim the mayor had promised that he would be getting a viewing area. One of the issues is that many people want closure, right? They've been through the gauntlet with this eruption even though they haven't been able to see it directly. They're evacuating a few blocks away. They get out of there hours before their home might be consumed by lava, but everything they're seeing is video or photos. There is no firsthand uh, ability for them to go and experience this. So the county is proposing this viewing area. They're talking about doing it at the Y of Highway 132 and Pooiki Road, which has an escape route being Highway 132 back to Pahoa. So it made perfect sense to be able to do it there. However, that promise, that idea of a viewing area is going to just never happen. It's only going to be talk and it will be talk throughout the eruption and continuing on after the eruption. This time lapse was taken near Green Mountain and it's looking back upslope towards Holly Kamaina and the lava channel. So what we're seeing here is lava boats. These are sections of the lava channel 
or the cinder cone itself that have broken, broken off and are being rafted down the lava channel to the ocean entry. And they're gonna make it most of the way down. The interesting thing about these is we even saw in the earlier parts of the eruption, entire Albizia trees, 100 foot, 150 foot tall trees, getting rafted down on top of the lava. It's, it's simply incredible stuff. We conclude June 21st with a look at another thermal map. And yet again, we see that lava ocean entry moving even further to the south. Otherwise, it's mostly unchanged. There is a little bit of intermittent activity at Fisher 16 and 18, a little uh, luminescence in the night. But otherwise, it's the Fisher 8 show. That'll do it for June 15th through the 21st of the 2018 eruption. The next one we'll also be looking to do hopefully an entire week. Until then, aloha.